Welcome back everyone. Hey, we're getting close to the end of this uh, Hypercube Evolution build. In this video, I'm going to take a quick look at getting the build plate sorted out as far as the heat, heating element and uh, measurement goes, and also the heating and measurement on the hot end. Okay, let's take a look at it now. Welcome back everyone. Well, it just gets worse and worse, doesn't it? <laughs> yes, a bit of a cabling nightmare. But this is all that's left. One thing left. Everything else has been tested and is working fine. So, the reason for this monstrosity is I actually plan to mount the controller up in this zone, ultimately. And this is the hotbed uh, wiring, current hotbed wiring anyway. And as you can see, it's, it's pretty much long enough to terminate up in this zone. I'm thinking I'll take the board and spin it around like that so it'll pretty well mount there perfectly so I haven't really wanted to dick around with extension cables on here or anything to test it so anyway as a result a couple of boxes get it up out of the way anyway hotbed wiring terminate on here uh, positive this is really a bit odd actually. Well actually it doesn't matter whether about the positive and negative here to be absolutely frank, but just for reference the positive on the power supply coming in is negative furthest away and positive closest and then it seems to reverse around for all of these connectors where it's positive, negative, positive, negative. Anyway, as I say it doesn't matter if it's not polarity sensitive, but heat bed wired in here. This is the heating element on the hot end into that next connector. Uh, here we have the cooling fan for the hot end heat break. Okay, now the thermistors, this is the heat bed and this is the extruder here. So as I say, everything's pretty much done. It looks like a bit of a nightmare, but all good. The one thing that's left, as you will note, is I haven't yet put in a stepper driver in this position here, and this is for the extruder. And as I mentioned, one cable left, and that's the extruder cable. I'm going to have to just grab a motor driver from one of the little self-balancing robots I built. I think I don't think I have a spare one lying around. I'll have a bit of a poke around. If I don't, I'll just grab one out of those because they just plug in. Anyway, let's have a look at that in the code and the testing of uh, the heat bed and the heating elements. Okay, okay so here we are uh, back in the Marlin configuration. I've mentioned this in a number of videos prior. I'm not going to go into installing uh, Visual Studio Code and Platform IO and everything in this video. I'll put a link down below to a video where I actually got the development environment up and running with the Marlin project and everything. Please go and check that. First up, just on the um, Titan Aero, when you come to actually con or put it together because it just comes as a pile of bits, if you go online and just basically do a search on Titan Aero Assembly, there's a great set of instructions there. They're really easy to follow, uh, really concise, um, and walk you through absolutely all of the construction, uh, which I followed pretty much to the letter. I think I probably mentioned it earlier, but I've purchased the 24 volt version, and I also purchased the actual little pancake stepper to sort of try and keep things as compact as possible. 
Anyway, just scrolling down through here, you'll see the instructions are really, really good. Now, when you actually put it together, the heat break is just screwed in firmly, not tight, because that needs to be tightened up uh, when it's heated up and uh, just to tighten it up to uh, where it needs to be. So just scrolling down through the instructions here. Ah, here we go. Now, we want to go to the Marlin configuration for the firmware. As I say, this is super easy to follow. So the first thing they're talking about here is setting the extruder direction. I'll just leave that as is at the moment. I think I've probably got to set to false. The next thing it sort of mentions here is setting the uh, number of steps per millimeter to 837. I've gone and changed that. Now, what you've got to bear in mind with this, I mean, I've got 80, 80, 400 and 837 now. They're not actually calibrated. I'll be readjusting uh, the X, the Y and the Z once I print a calibration cube and actually see what's what. And that's what they're saying here with the steps per millimeter as well. It goes through the whole process of extruding, measuring and, and adjusting that particular, those steps per millimeter. So that's going to change, but that's a starting point anyway. Uh, if we just scroll down a bit further, mentions EEPROM. This will be commented by default, so uncomment that. So that allows you to save settings using M500 and uh, retrieve them with M501. Okay, uh, scrolling down a little bit further. Blah, 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 that's setting it. And here it goes through how to actually measure and set that value permanently. Next thing I just want to look at is setting up the thermistor. Okay, now I actually had this set as one just to get something in there previously. And you'll notice I've got the bed set to uh, type one, which um, if we look at it, pretty much seems to be, you know, the default. Uh, for a 100k thermistor and when we look here 5 is actually a 100k thermistor as well but um, hey they say you use 5 so I have changed the temperature sensor to be uh, 5 now the other thing because we do need to heat the hot end up to 285 we're going to need to change this max temperature setting to 285 so I've also done that. The other thing they mention in the instructions is to uh, set this min temp to a five. That's what it is by default, nothing to do there. So the reason they have that min temperature setting is if the thermistor stops reading at all because it you know, breaks, the way these thermistors work, it will effectively indicate a low temperature. So what's going to happen is the heater is going to turn on and heat and try and heat it up further to get back to its set point. And you're going to end up with a fire or melting things or something horrible anyway. So what they're saying is with this min temperature, if it goes less than five degrees, then just turn the heater off. Anyway, the next thing they say is to basically just upload the firmware. Now that I've got those settings in there, I just want to test and make sure that everything looks okay on the actual printer. So I'll power it up and we can start having a look at things. So we're going to be using Pronto Face again for this. I just connect. Uh, so we're connected and instantly I can tell that something's looking fairly positive here anyway because both the temperatures uh, reading exactly the same for the bed and the extruder so if nothing else that's a positive sort of thing and here we see the actual temperature here so uh, 21.34 and or 20.9 21.2 it's uh, varying around a little bit there but you know essentially both around the 20 21 degrees so that's a positive sign right at the outset. Okay, so the first thing I want to test is uh, the bed heater. 
and if you send an M140 that will actually change the set point of the bed and the S50 means change the set point to 50 degrees so if we send that now it's obviously doing something because I can hear the power supply fan increase so there's something going on just touching the heat bed I can already feel a bit of heat going into it and if we look at pronto face the bed temperature starting to come up and over here we can see 34 35 so that's starting to come up that's already up to temperature now and it's certainly hot so pretty pleased with that seems to be reading all right so I'll turn that off okay so next I want to take a look at setting the extruder temperature just to see if that looks all right and the command for that is M104 and let's set it to say 50 just to see if it looks like it's going okay send okay well something's happening again because the power supply fan sort of kicked into action and on the chart we can see the temperature going up again and we're at 50.5 already 52 a little bit of overshoot there yeah it's um definitely hot i've got the boot on the on the hot end but i can feel that it's definitely warm anyway that seems to be settling down nicely now so that's looking good heating elements working okay on the bed also on the extruder so all that's left to do in the next video is get that stepper driver sorted out for the extruder and then it's fine tuning everything getting it all uh, dialed in and after that I can actually print out a case for that controller and get rid of that mess at the back of it okay cheers for now if you like what I'm doing then please do like the video if you'd like to see more then please subscribe and don't forget to hit the chime so you get notified when I post something new and I'll put a couple of links here to some other videos you can look at